Well, today is a very exciting day for the City of Melbourne and the Salvation Army. We had a very successful project last year where the Hamadova Cafe became a safe spot late at night and we're delighted that once again we're partnering with Major Brenda Notto and the Salvation Army at the Hamadova Cafe and Kresik Woolen Mills who are providing blankets as well so that our most vulnerable people have somewhere to go at night, particularly during winter when it's cold and wet, that is warm, that is safe, that is dry, but also where we can hook those people into services, whether they're housing services, drug and alcohol services, the range of other services that are needed for people who are sleeping rough on our streets. We're doing it also in conjunction with our daily support teams where we'll be out interacting with people in a very assertive way on the streets to let them know what's available. And we hope with these two initiatives, the City of Melbourne can begin to address some of the problems that we've found over the last couple of years with rough sleeping. It's not a complete answer to it by any means. We'd like to have people whose health was under control and who had a roof over their heads that they could call their own. But there are very important intermediary steps that you might need to take with some of our rough sleepers to get them there. Uh, well, we, we'll look at extending it again. This takes us through winter and even into the hotter uh, days. And, you know, it's uh, a budget item year by year. This is about $300,000. Um, once again, we'll evaluate this next 250 days. And if it works as well as we think it will, and I see no reason why it would be any different from the last time we did it, then we'd look at it again as a budget item for as long as we need to do it. The goal is, of course, in the end, not to need a safe space late at night in Melbourne. You know, that's one of the reasons we're doing it sort of budget by budget. But we are not there yet. Is this going to solve the problem of those homeless camps that a lot was made of earlier in the year, do you think? Look, I don't think it's going to solve anything about rough sleeping. You know, this is not putting a roof over people's heads permanently, but it is a step in that direction. So if people feel the need to congregate for safety, um, then they can do that here in, in a safe and supportive environment. So I hope it will have an effect so that people feel that this is the place to come. And when Brendan and the team did it last time, we were getting 70 to 80 people a night. They are people who otherwise would have been sleeping rough. This is coming out because the Salvation Army is involved. Launch housing is involved, uh, Melbourne City Mission is involved. So, you know, we, we have about 70 different service providers that we work with, uh, and we have a range of very generous corporate sponsors like the Creswick Knitting Mills, uh, and, and we're delighted to partner with them. That's one thing that we can do from the City of Melbourne. We can coordinate those services, and, and we're getting great cooperation from all the agencies in doing that. But do we need other locations as well into the future? Oh, I think let's start with this one. This one seems to fulfil the need as far as the, the City of Melbourne is concerned and, and where, where the real, I suppose, the focus of a lot of attention for rough sleeping. This is an answer to that rough sleeping. But as I say, it's not a permanent answer. We'd much prefer to see people in better health and with a permanent roof over their heads, but we need to take some steps before we can get to that with a number of these very vulnerable people. I have a question on cladding. Yep. Unless, Brendan, you want to say a few words? Yeah. Might just Can finish on, sure? on the hammer over. Sure. Brendan, go ahead. Uh, we believe the Safe Space Night Cafe is actually Melbourne at its best. So we're incredibly thankful to the City of Melbourne, uh, particularly the Lord Mayor Robert Doyle and councillors for the wonderful support that they're giving this project. And uh, it proved last year where we ran it for 20 weeks and we saw between 75 to 85 people a night that this is needed in the city. And it's particularly needed now when the city is becoming incredibly cold. And it's one of the most depressing things to actually see people, human beings, somebody's son or daughter or somebody's mum and dad actually sleeping on a piece of carpet on or a piece of cardboard on a terrible cold uh, concrete. So uh, this concept is a really helpful one, but it's not the full answer. It's just part of the solution. And we're working very closely with uh, other agencies, including Collingwood Football Club, who are involved with the Magpie Nest Housing Program, to help uh, create housing outcomes for people who've got nowhere else to go. So uh, Creswick Knitting Mills have been incredibly generous too in handing over a thousand blankets, and we're really looking forward to that partnership. And those sorts of partnerships are incredibly important, not just to keep people Warm, but to actually keep them alive. Brendan, what are we seeing this winter compared to previous winters? Uh, is the need increasing, stabilising? Uh, please tell us. Well, the need's shifting, actually. So we were seeing uh, encampments around the city. We're not seeing as many encampments now, but we're still seeing people sleeping rough, and there's still a significant need. And we saw when the night cafe ran last year that the police indicated to us that the number of rough sleepers in the city overnight actually decreased significantly, and the number of issues involving rough sleepers that the police had to attend to decreased significantly as well. So we see that providing a safe place, which is warm, which also has a whole range of supports to help get people back on their feet, is incredibly important. What do people get initially when they enter a 
a safe space like this, so the blankets and hot food? Oh, I think, know? first of all, they get a very warm welcome, and uh, that's important for people that are cold and lonely. Uh, they get acknowledged as being a human being. They're not just a stat. Um, they're, they're a human being, and that's how they get treated here. They get treated with dignity and respect. They're given food. Uh, we reckon we've got the best toasted sandwiches in town. Uh, and they get a cup of tea, cup of coffee, and then uh, there's a worker that will connect with them and just hear their story and then start to do some work to help get them back on their feet and resolve the issues that caused them to be homeless in the first place. And Brendan Melvin really does take the lead on this nationally, don't they? Well, I'm not sure if we do. I, I think we certainly see uh, a significant issue here in Melbourne. And last year, the street count was 247 people sleeping rough. But the street count in Sydney is up around 500. So this is not just a Melbourne issue. And in fact, homelessness is not just a city of Melbourne issue. Uh, people's homelessness very rarely starts in the city. It often starts in suburbs and regional rural areas. And people tend to drift to cities because it's a place where they can be anonymous and it's a place where they can access major hospitals and major <coughs> services. So so uh, really what we need to be doing is providing centres such as this in the city, but also looking at what we can do uh, to support people before they actually end up being homeless and rough sleeping in the suburbs and regional rural areas.